hello, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and you have found a place where I like to talk about all things murdery. So in that vein, what everybody's talking about right now is Netflix's new series, Dahmer. Um, so this is obviously a biopic about the life and crimes of Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, so the show starts early on talking about his young life, his family dynamics, um, his mom, who was apparently using significant amount of, or significant amount of drugs, prescription drugs, while she was pregnant with him, and they'd never formed a strong attachment. It's kind of the cliched bad relationship with the mother, serial killer stereotype. Um, it talks about how he and his dad dissected roadkill together, um, kind of as a means of studying science. <laughs> and, you know, kind of going through his young life, his parents' divorce, um, how he ended up alone for long periods of time, and then it goes into, you know, his killing spree. Um, if you're not overly familiar with Jeffrey Dahmer, um, I think probably the thing most people know about him um, is that he was known to cannibalize his victims. Um, and this show depicts, ugh, depicts all of that. So I will tell you, Jeffrey Dahmer has always creeped me out. I think it's the cannibalism. Um, and I don't feel any differently about that after having watched this. So, um, you know, yeah, let's get into it. So I think the easiest way for me to think about this is when I read a book or read an article, you know I'm a big reader. I read my a lot of my nonfiction stories. I have a whole bunch about Peter Sutcliffe I'm in the middle of right now. Um, but if you read um, a story about Ted Bundy and it says that he was known to visit sites where he dumped bodies and had sex with decomposing corpses, or that Ed Kemper decapitated his mother and then had sex with her headless corpse, that evokes a different imagery than to read something that says they were known to commit acts of necrophilia. Just that level of gratuity, gratuitousness, um, description paints a different picture. So likewise to have read somewhere that <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer was known to drill holes in his victims' heads while they're still living, right? He's drugged them, but he's drilling holes in their heads while they're still living and pouring in either boiling water or acid in an attempt to create, you know, this a zombie effect, in essence, to perform these really crude lobotomy attempts. It's a little different than to see him with a running drill walking up to, you know, his unconscious victim and to hear that. So, ugh. Um, so, you know, for me, I, I obviously love a serial killer documentary um, or biography, but I hate horror movies. Uh, I don't, I, yeah, I do not like to watch, watch scary movies. I realize that for a lot of people, these things are incongruous. They don't understand why I can read a serial killer you know, book or watch a documentary on Ted Bundy, but I don't want to watch a horror movie. And the big distinction is that gratuitous gore factor. And I hate that. But here is the good thing that is about this gratuitous portrayal. When you read something like this person committed acts of necrophilia, although you know what necrophilia means and you might kind of cringe or wrinkle your nose and disgust a little bit, you don't really picture what that means. Your brain just sh shuts that down and kind of protects you from going down that horrible path. So even if you do manage to think about it a little bit further, like, oh, what, what would that look like? You are still probably not picturing a rotting corpse that has insect activity and quite frankly, stinks of decay. Like you just can't really fathom it. Like your brain won't let you do it. And frankly, I'm okay with that. I don't want to. Ugh. So this gratuitous gore factor that they, they incorporated into this series really kind of forces you to think about it in a different way. 
Um, I think it's really easy when you're not looking at it from that perspective, when you are kind of keeping it shut down to really distance yourself from how horrible these things are. And I know there is a lot of, um, uh, you know, challenge or a lot of um, concern about this kind of creating serial killers. And this is, this is portrayed in the show as well, but kind of create turning these serial killers into um, somebody to be idolized or heroes in a way. Um, you know, look what they've managed to accomplish or, you know, they're in the news, so they're famous. Um, and to not really think about these monstrous, horrible things that they have done. So displaying this gratuitous level of violence um, kind of makes you realize really what they, you know, they, in this case, Jeffrey Dahmer, what he has done. Um, so it really did force me to think about it in a deeper way, definitely in a deeper way, frankly, than I wanted to think about it. Um, something that I thought was really interested to, interesting too in the series is they really depict his first few murderers um, essentially as accidental. Um, so, you know, the way I think about this, there are, there are a lot of different kinds of accidents. So, um, you know, if I wreck my car driving on black ice, like, okay, that's an accident. If I bash someone's head in with a dumbbell because I'm having an outburst of anger, or I strangle them and beat them in a drug-induced stupor, is that an accident? Can, can we really call that an accident? Um, you know, I could probably be persuaded to call it not premeditated, but I don't know that I could swing all the way over to accidental. Uh, interestingly, like as a correlation, I'm currently reading a book um, called Serial Killers, The Methods and Madness of Murder by, or The Methods and Madness of Monsters, sorry, by Peter Vronsky. I'll put it in the description. Um, and he hypothesizes that, I can't show it to you because it's an audiobook. Um, sorry, squirrel. He hypothesizes that for a lot of serial killers, their first murders are accidental. And once they have crossed that moral boundary, it becomes easier for them to continue crossing it. Like they might have that initial, oh my gosh, what did I do? And you see Dahmer in this having that moment, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to, didn't mean to kill you. Didn't you? Because it sure seemed like you meant to kill him. But I think it's one of those like fits of rage kinds of moments. But again, I just have to really question, you know, the idea that serial killers commit their first murders accidentally. I have never personally accidentally strangled anyone. I've never intentionally strangled anyone, just to be very clear, never strangled anyone. Um, and it's really hard for me to imagine how that could be perceived as, as unintentional. So not premeditated, I'll give you not premeditated, like fit of anger, I'll give you fit of anger, snapped, I'll give you that. But accidental, I don't know that I can get there personally. So <laughs> reflecting on this too, and reflecting on kind of what I've thought about Jeffrey Dahmer in the past, because of course I've read about him and, um, you know, listen to documentaries and podcasts about him before. I have always, to be, to be honest, um, always felt a little bit sorry for Jeffrey Dahmer. Don't get me wrong, dude still creeps me out. Um, totally blah. But I always felt a little bit sorry for him. Like he didn't at least initially set out to kill his victims. He was trying to create these zombies, right? He was so upset the, at the idea that people were leaving him. He had the, the worst abandonment complex ever um, that he was trying to create these zombies so that they could never leave him, which is of course awful, right? I'm trying to, you know, essentially turn you into it like a lifeless shell. Um, you know, they depict one of his first experiments essentially was with a mannequin, uh, which his grandmother found and, and, um, got rid of, which was obviously very upsetting to him. But he obviously quickly moved on from the mannequin to trying to create his own human doll, essentially. So obviously that is horrible, but he didn't set out to kill and cannibalize um, his victims. However, 
after having watched this documentary and really thinking about <laughs> in a much deeper way, what that really meant, I don't have an ounce of empathy left for Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, I do feel like the show or the series did a really good job of depicting how lonely he was, how sad he was, how hard it was for him when people left him. But what the show did even better and what is missing from most serial killer biopics or biographies is they really depicted things from the perspective of the victims, not only the victims, but how this impacted their families. Um, if you watched my September or my October TBR list, my to be read list, you know I have a couple of books, uh, New Yorkshire Ripper, The Art of Survival. Um, and then somewhere I put the other one. Oh, somebody's mother, somebody's daughter. And these are the victims' stories of the Yorkshire Ripper. So I think this is something that's missing and that allows people to get that I almost idolized perspective of serial killers because that's what's missing from the biopics is that perspective of the families of the victims. And once you really see how what he did impacted people, you, I don't know how you can still feel sorry for him. Um, I certainly, I certainly do not. Um, it, it's one thing to read, you know, the victim, read a victim count or um, even to know their names. Like a lot of victim or a lot of serial killer biopics, they'll show the victims at the end. And all you're getting though is a picture and a name. You don't know anything about them. You know, were they, did they have a family? Um, did they like to play softball? Um, you know, were they a member of the local Euchre club? I don't know. <laughs> um, was there, you know, their idea of a good time, pizza and football? Like once you would know them as people, it's really hard to discount, discount them and to know that they left behind mothers and sisters and children potentially, you know, yeah, I, I don't have an ounce uh, of empathy left for Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, any suffering that he experienced, he imparted on these victims a hundred fold. And then, I mean, he just multiplied his suffering, um, you know, in a, in a truly exponential way. So after all of that, where does that leave us? Did I like the show? Would I recommend it? Um, honestly, I have pretty complicated feelings about it. I thought it was very well acted. I thought the story was well told. Um, if you, I want to say if you didn't know anything at all about Jeffrey Dahmer, that you would leave with a pretty good understanding. But honestly, I don't know that you would. <laughs> For example, there are scenes of him cooking the meat. And it's certainly, you, you know, because we know, you know what he's doing. But I don't know if they really used that. Like, they didn't really explain that. I don't know. We know, so I didn't need an explanation. I was well aware of what was happening. But if you didn't know that Jeffrey Dahmer cannibalized his victims, you might just be like, ah, oh, there he is frying up a steak. No, mm -mm. no, that's not, that's not what that was. So, uh, but I do still feel like the story was really well told and how explicit, you know, do you need to get? Um, but so if you are interested in serial killers in general, um, Jeffrey Dahmer specifically, especially, absolutely watch this show. Um, I will warn you that reading, reading about it and watching some of these things being depicted evokes a very different emotional response and frankly, a physical response like, Whoa. um, so for me personally, the gore factor way too high. Um, I almost abandoned ship after episode two, um, but I was powering through, um, I will not be going back and watching it again. Absolutely not. No. Um, I hate gore. This was way too much for me. Um, and right now I really want to just go watch some movie about fluffy unicorns galloping around rainbows. Um, because that show was a huge bummer and I need something to lift me back up here. Like it was a huge bummer. So anyway, would I watch it again? No, absolutely not. Do I think it was very well done? Yes. Um, Definitely too, too high gore, 
too high gore for me, but I do think they did um, did well by did as well by the victims as they probably could have, um, you know, with making a limited series. So uh, let me know in the comments. Did you did you watch the show? Um, what did you think of it? And um, yeah, let me know. As always, have fun, be safe, and don't murder anybody. All right, bye.